things you want to do in my life through the things that bother me, their irritating <laughs> habits, their moodiness, their unloving ways, their demand, woo, their insensitivity, their unrealistic expectations. Mercy. I'm grateful that you are with me to meet my needs when others, even those close to me, fail to do so. That's right. I'm so glad you are also within me working to make me more like Jesus, more patient, more gentle, more loving through the very things I dislike. So sometimes in life, we have to be exposed to things that we dislike, to people that we dislike. <laughs> Were you about to make a comment? <laughs> Many years, and you know how my sister laid in that bed for 20 oh, years. Yes. 20 years, do you know that? Can you imagine what she put me through? Yes. It, 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 it's, it's a toll on you. They say caregivers actually suffer more than a lot of people and year after year, year after year, and it takes a toll on your body, your heart, your soul, your mind, it does. To come out a stronger person. Better. Yes. When you get through and look back on it, you, have, you just have to know that without God, you never could have made that. And they strike out because they, you know, they think they've lost control. And, mm. and my, my sister was a, very devout Christian woman. Mm -hmm. When she had a moment, she had to lay in that bed for 20 years. Yes, 20 years! Not even getting up none except the last two years of her life. A lot of people don't understand too, sometimes we're dealing with people and they're lashing out like wounded animals, but lose your ability yeah. to walk, right. to, to have the use of your limbs, to be able to uh, do sports if you're a man who's very athletic. I read once that people who are in the military who use their limbs, that it's like all of a sudden they see men all over the place running with the football and, and, and hitting baseball, the baseball bats hitting the baseball. They see athletes all over the place when they've lost the use of their limbs. So it can be difficult if you're accustomed to doing for yourself, having to depend on people. Very difficult when you lose your health, when you're used to serving in the church. Uh, being a provider of your man, it can be very difficult. And so these people are going through, so sometimes that's why it's good to put yourself in the other person's shoes and not, oh, they're putting me through. What are they going through? Why are they putting you through? Perspective. Okay, let's continue on. Thank you too, that you love these people and that your love is adequate to meet their deep needs and to transform their lives, however willful or unpleasant or unwise they may sometimes be. Hmm. Thank you that you care for them deeply, that each of them has the potential of being a vast reservoir from which you could receive eternal pleasure. And so, though I may not feel grateful, I give thanks for them by faith, Thank you. trusting your goodness, your wisdom, your power, and your love for them as well as for me. And do we think sometimes about the fact that God loves other people just like he loves us yeah. and God wants to save other people just like he wants to save us? Do we think about the other person, that perspective? I know I was going through a difficult situation with one person and God did say to me, I love this person also. I'm trying to save both of you. And, and that, that changed how I viewed the situation. It really did. And then God actually allowed me to see what was happening behind that person's actions. So I, and I took, had to take the time to look and not think about myself and my own suffering. Okay, the last paragraph. Your goodness, your wisdom. No, I that, wait, wait, did you stop? I'm sorry. I, know, I, know, I, know, I, and I praise you that I need not fret about the, these people. Or be angry, or low, over anger, thoughts to prove I'm right. Mm. Thank you that by your power I can receive them as you receive me, just as I am. All right. Warts, Warts. and wrinkles, and hand ups, hand ups, hang ups, sorry, and all that I can choose not to judge them. But to forgive them, yeah. to yeah. counsel, counsel yeah. any debt, yeah. I feel they mm. owe me, yeah. owe me any apologies. My obligation, yeah. 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 
education that through your grace I can choose to wipe clean any escapes, slates of grieving, grievance I have within me and to view these peoples with a heart that say you no longer own me, owe me, owe me, owe me a thing. Okay, let's stop right there. Do we feel this way? Except people with their warts, wrinkles, hang-ups and all, because guess what? Everybody in this room, we all have them. Now guess what? Some people may have more than others, but we all have them. If God can accept me with whatever I've got, everything I've got, guess what? I can accept everyone in this room with what they've got, and they can accept me with what I've got too. That's what okay. you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for not Okay. Thank you for your spirit who empowers me so that I can do them good, delight in you, and commit my way to you, resting in you as you unfold your good purposes and these relationships in your time. And when we come back, we've made it. Day 31, 31 days of praise, my favorite day when we come back. <laughs> Okay, what impressed me mostly about the book, The Song of Eve, is there's a young girl, she is leaving her parents' home, she leaves her fiance, riches and wealth and prestige to go into the wilderness to just be with her God. And it is so impressive. It is like, I can't really believe that she did that. To order your copy of the inspirational book, Song of Eve, call 352-622-7607, order online at Amazon.com, or simply visit the website on your screen. I read the Song of Eve for several times because I run two corporations and my day can be exceedingly hectic and stressful. But when I read the Song of Eve, it literally transports me back in time to another day, another time, another era. The author uses language that's so detailed and picturesque and you can see flowers and you can see the trees and the mountains and the cascading waterfalls and it just gives me peace and it gives me calm, thoroughly engages me. I read the Song of Eve because of the fact that I was traveling and I needed to burn some time. So I picked up the book and began to read it and I found it to be very interesting because it really uh, painted a picture to me. I like the way the author um, painted the picture through words. So that's the kind of book that I need to uh, keep me engaged. So that's why I read the book Song of Eve and I, en I encourage anybody um, with a little spare time just to maybe read the first chapter of it and see doesn't it do the same thing for you. To, to the next generation. Today we're talking about emotional healing and we are referencing the book 31 Days of Praise and the ladies who are here with me, we have made it to day 31. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> and it's been a beautiful journey. Amen. Could we get a reader for day 31? I, I don't. Go ahead. I do. I don't. I don't. I exalt before you because you're eternal and never changing in your truth, in your attributes, and in your attitude toward me and all your loved ones. Okay, let's stop right there. To me, that was a deep thing because if you've been, you live long enough on this earth, you know that sometimes people are just not there for you. Um, they may mean well, they may mean to be there, but they have their own issues, own situations they're going through. But what struck me was that God is the only constant in my life. God. And you know what? It's great to have at least somebody who is a constant in your life, who's not switching out and changing out on you. <laughs> Let's continue. I'm so glad that your persistent tenderness binds my heart to you forever that you who began a good work in me will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You are utterly faithful and will finish what you set out to do. You will not abandon the work you have begun. And, and something in there that stood out to me was, okay, I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. It's okay 
that I'm not, because guess what? It's a journey. It's a daily death. It's a daily thing. And God is committed to carrying out this process and this work within me. He's not going to give up on me if I don't give up on him. And he's going to carry it out until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. And that makes me feel good to know that. Okay. Yes, yes. And he's, he needs to be that way with a whole lot of us. <laughs> Humans will drop you, kick you, cast you aside, but God is going to be there. <laughs> okay, another reader. Thank you for giving us priceless promises, great beyond measure, promises that apply to your work in me, and my loved ones, and my situation, and my service, and, and the whole world. And not one single word of your of your promise, your of your good promise, has ever failed. I glorify you because no human problems, however hopeless or impossible, is too hard for, for you. You. you are able to give life to the dead and call into being that which does not exist. So I need not. Struggle. Stagger. Stagger. Okay. I need not stagger at your promises. At your promises or waver in unbelief. Amen. What what yeah. have what you have. what you have promised you are able to perform. Okay, let's start right there right there. And, and you see I'm really excited about this day and why and probably you understand why I kept rereading and rereading this day because when I look at this, humans lie. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's be frank. Um, but it says not one single word of your good promises has ever failed. God is not a man that he should lie. OK. And it also talks about the fact that God, no matter how hard or hopeless the situation looks, I think sometimes it goes back to this word perspective. If we would just take a look and think about the fact that Joseph was 13, 17 years old, sold as a slave, uh, was in, and then went from being a slave to being in prison. 13 years of his life must have looked bleak, must have looked difficult, must have looked impossible, but he was faithful to God throughout all of that betrayal, the, the hardship, everything. So is there anything in my life that can really compare to that? That's right. No. And everything about Job is even more. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank God. Those things would go I think those crazy. stories were, were just written so that when we, when, when that file broke, mm -hmm. and when we run across these, uh, look, he, he, he's, it's written, Amen. it's got to happen, but if you can just hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Do what they ain't going to be. It'll all it'll be worth it all. And even with the Joseph situation, I'm sure the devil made him think, OK, and you really thought that you were going to be a, a ruler one day, uh, a leader one day. And here you are, you've gone from bad to worse, a slave, and now you're in prison. But guess what? One day, one day, he went to become the from being in, in prison to being the second greatest ruler of the most powerful country in the whole world. So guess what? We don't need to stagger at God's promise. We need to waver at unbelief. Don't look around at our situation and circumstances and think that it can't happen. It's not going to happen because all it took for him was just one day. One day made a big difference. So what God has promised, he is able to perform and we've got to claim that. And then I want us to read the last part together as we go through this. It says, to you who are able to keep us from falling and to present us before your glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. And then in our final thing there, for our final thing, I want us to read this scripture together as well for our final thing. Blessed be the Lord, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed for all his good promise. 1 Kings 8, 56. 
when we cry out to God daily, he will bring us through any situation. He will help us to trust him and to have the right perspective. In time, he will work out everything for our good and bring healing throughout our land. This is Cynthia Tobelfor to the next generation. Until the next time. Thank you ladies for being here with us today. <laughs>